Hello, I hope everyone is doing well. I have quite a few exposing points to talk about in this video. In the last video, I talked about how I was isolated in the Lord's recovery, particularly from my own parents, and I also introduced the mind control in the Lord's recovery. In this video, I will aim to further discuss these points using some interesting examples that will hopefully be fascinating to the viewers. So at this stage, around 95% of my life was based around this cult. I was naturally losing a lot of connections with many of my friends, including many of my Christian friends. At this stage, I was really giving up my life for this group. I wasn't giving up my life to follow Jesus, but I was giving up my life to be a member of Witness Lee's church. So at the beginning of my third year in this cult, I went to live in the Lord's Recovery corporate living. And generally the Lord's Recovery corporate livings are for people who are looking to take their involvement in the Lord's Recovery to the next level. The cor corporate living that I was in personally was mainly for young students in this group who had a desire to go to the full-time training, which, like I've said before, is Witness Lee's Bible College. And the corporate living would prepare students to go to this. The corporate living that I was in um, was a massive house. Um, it, had, uh, it was two stories and had about probably about 10 bedrooms. Downstairs consisted of the sisters' bedrooms with a huge corporate lounge, and upstairs consisted of the brothers' bedrooms with a huge brothers' lounge. And by no means were any of the females allowed to walk upstairs, strictly out of bounds, no girls allowed. That was the rule. And also another rule was a male and a female were not allowed to be in the same room unless there were more than two people in the room. And if this unfortunate situation occurred, the female was required to get up and leave the room immediately. That was the rule, and they actually took this very, very seriously. So, um, yeah, so you even have a bit of gender, gender isolation among the young people in this cult. And personally, I'm not against this completely, but with cults, they always take things to the extreme, where one man and one wom woman can't even be in the same room together. Unless, of course, there is more than two people in the room. So, I've already talked a little bit about the morning revival um, in my previous videos. This piece of material is one of the key, was one of the key components in the corporate living. And actually, before I was allowed to live in the corporate living, I was required to sign a Lord's Recovery uh, declaration with a lot of rules on it. And one of those rules was um, you will be encouraged to attend the corporate morning revival every morning, except Saturday. But as I've noted in my previous video, the word encourage in the Lord's Recovery doesn't really mean what the word is supposed to mean. It often means you will be heavily pressured and sometimes even forced to do something that you don't really want to do. And that's what the word encourage means in the Lord's recovery. So, um, so how the morning revival worked in the corporate living was that first you were required to get up every morning, almost every morning, at 7 a.m. and begin by doing a personal morning revival. This is where you read the morning revival by yourself and get yourself prepared for the corporate morning revival. And you have only 10 minutes to do this. And of course, this gives you very little time in the morning to actually read the Bible. Because the morning revival, witness these uh, writings will always take prior priority in the Lord's recovery over the actual Bible. So then at 7.10am, 
you will be required to go downstairs uh, to participate in the corporate morning revival. Usually the corporate morning revival will begin with everyone singing a few songs. During the singing, uh, or after, uh, we would do a lot of chanting, a lot of chanting. And if you were a bit quiet, like myself, uh, they would call you out uh, for not exercising your spirit or chanting the songs. After that, we pray read a, f a couple of Bible verses, which were always at the top of the morning revival uh, for each passage. And uh, um, like I've discussed in a past video, pray reading consists of repeating a verse or parts of a verse over and over and over again. Um, and then after that, after we've done some pray reading, we would delve into the main course of the meal, which was Witness Lee's inspirational writings for the day. And we would go around the room and every, everyone would read one line each. And you were required to read it with boldness. And then after that, some people would share what they've enjoyed from the portion. Um, and then we would be forced to pray. <laughs> and apply what we've um, learnt from Witness Lee's message into the prayers. And then that would be it. It was done. We were allowed to leave. And this usually took about, probably about 20 minutes each morning. You know, and there was no Bible. There was no Bible. There was no genuine prayer and comfort and care for people. It was just read Witness Lee, chant, and act like robots. And this happened almost every <laughs> single morning. So surprisingly, a lot of the uh, people in this corporate living got sick of got actually sick of doing this every single morning. It it was kind of like a household chore for many of us. Um, yeah, and I got to the stage where oh, I got to the stage where a lot of us started not going. Or we, we just had to go, and we didn't really want to be there. And that led to a very dry corporate morning revival. And even for me, I would sneak out of the house very early on, very early in the morning, and I would go for a very long walk, just so I'd, and I'd come back after the morning revival had finished. <laughs> so, yeah, so the leaders of the house started to become very very worried um, and because a lot of the young people just did not want to be there so the leaders did two things they began by knocking on everyone's doors they would say something like brother brother get up get up get out of bed get downstairs hurry up morning revival is on hurry up brother they would knock on your beds even they would even knock on your like they tap you on the shoulder maybe um, also, they ended up doing a roll call, like they do with school children. And they would tick off your name if they saw that you had come downstairs to enjoy in the Witness Lee books. And for me personally, you know, I, you know, I never felt like I had any genuine, genuine relationship with God. All I was doing was chanting, parroting Witness Lee, and sheepishly obeying Everything, everything from the house leaders uh, that I was told to believe. Yeah, I was very much in a brainwashed condition during this period. But thankfully, over a period of time, alarm bells started to ring. I started to realize um, how heavily submissive they were towards Witness Lee and his ministry. In the corporate living, um, uh, and also in the corporate living, I was introduced to the Living Stream Ministry website, which is where they publish all of Witness Lee's materials. I had not really been exposed to this website before entering the corporate living. Um, and I started to think that it was kind of a bit strange that this group of people were so dedicated towards a single man. During this period, I started to observe a lot of bashing in the, corporate, in the corporate living towards other Christians outside of the local church. Yeah, they were regularly talking about how terrible Christian churches are 
and how they don't really have the full truth, like the Lord's Recovery do. I thought this was a little bit strange. I, I had heard a little bit of this on the Christians on Campus that I was in, but these people were taking it to a whole new level. So I was concerned. So I went to the LSM website, the Living Stream Ministry website, and investigated this. And that's where I found Revelation 17. And in this chapter, Witness Lee has interpreted the daughter of the mother harlots, uh, daughters of the mother harlot to the Christian churches, uh, that being both denomina denominational and non-denominational churches. I also found uh, their interpretation of the seven churches at the beginning of Revelations. Witness Lee believes that only his church is the true church, the Church of Philadelphia, and that all the other churches in mainstream Christianity are the bad churches that the Lord rebuked in Revelations chapter 2 and Revelations chapter 3. And you know, that's exactly why this cult targets Christians. Their goal is to recruit Christians into their group uh, and non-Christians. They call this bringing people out of religion and bringing them into the proper unity. The proper unity being their cult. So yeah, don't, don't be deceived if you see a Christians on campus group talk about how accepting they are of all believers. Not really. They accept those who they think uh, might be potential recruits or potential candidates for their wider cult. Um, so also, also um, just to extend on this point, I remember I was sitting in a in a small meeting with a small group of young people, uh, and there was a couple of new prospective students at this meeting, and there was also a couple of full time training students there. Um, there was one particular full time training student who was a very outspoken person. He was a little bit different than the regular uh, full-time training students. This guy just started to go on and on and on about how terrible mainstream Christianity is and how it's lacking so severely. And what this guy didn't realize was that there was two new perspective students sitting right opposite, <laughs> opposite him. And this guy was going on and on and on. And the new students sitting there were starting to, were actually in these Christian churches. And they were starting to be a little bit concerned because this guy was bad mouthing their churches so much. Uh, so all the dedicated local church followers were looking at, including myself, were looking at this guy and we were trying to tell, her, tell him with our eyes, you know, bro, bro, you know, play it cool, play it cool, you know. There's two new perspective students sitting right there, play, play it cool. You know, you're, blo you're bro blowing our cover, bro. You know, and thankfully, um, the thankful thing is, I don't think I ever saw those students again, which is good. So, yeah, um, in the next video, I'm going to continue my experience, talking about my experience in the corporate living, um, and how they actually isolated, uh, how they further isolated me from my friends and family. I will also talk about how I was able to rekindle my relationship with my family and friends and how me doing this created a lot of problems in the corporate living. And I will also expose what they actually told me personally. Eventually, I left the corporate living. Um, yeah, and I was happy doing that. Uh, and I will also discuss a couple more points on the mind control too. Oh, also, just lastly, some people have been asking me, um, why am I bashing the local churches so much? You know, what am I going to get out, out of doing this? And yeah, my focus is not actually to bash the local churches, even though it may, might seem like that. My main purpose of doing these videos is to warn people outside of the local churches who don't know much about this group. They are the people I am targeting. And that's why I'm actually doing these videos. And also, I do I do actually hope a few local church members will wake will wake up as well.
Now that's something I will continue to pray for. So overall, thank you so much for watching, and God bless.